Today's video is gonna be on the adjustable speed of learning, how to safely push the envelope when it comes to your progress. Welcome to Trials Progression. I'm Tommy T, I'm a coach and manager by day, and I'm learning trial skills at night, just documenting the process to try and help you progress faster. The way I like to think about this is almost like you've got four different dials that you can turn up in order to maximize your effectiveness. So right now I've got ride time, direction, risk, and commitment as different things that you can adjust. You can turn them up or down, so to speak. So I'll talk more about these in detail, but undoubtedly the amount of ride time that you put in is going to make a huge difference on how successful you are. I like to try and ride consistently, ideally four or five times a week, 30 minutes to an hour, as opposed to going just one time out because every time that I'm on the bike, I'm developing consistency and I'm building upon the skills that I learned in the previous day. The second one, the direction that you're getting. Undoubtedly, watching YouTube and taking lessons and classes from pros is a huge benefit. What you learn in what order and how it's broken down will play a huge part in your success. If you're getting instruction from mentors or riding with better riders, that's definitely the easiest way to progress if you're wanting to grow in your skills. How much risk you're willing to take. When it comes to crashing and injuring potentially your body or damaging your bike, how much risk you're willing to take to push the envelope is a big factor in your development. We're going to talk more about that later. And then lastly, your commitment or your mental approach, the goals you set, how much time and energy you're willing to give to something, the way you're just focused on it is going to play a big factor as well. So undoubtedly, you've probably heard, put first things first, learn the basics. Although how many of us as macho men in between the ages of 40 and 60, which is the typical viewer that I have, are doing the basics first. When I got into this, I was all about trying to ride obstacles and pull wheelies, and I was attempting things like a jap zap that I had no business trying to do until I developed clutch control. But turns and clutch control and throttle are boring. They're not necessarily what you wanna first do when you get on a bike, although they are important. But I would say that layered foundation of learning the first things first is gonna allow you to build upon that layer safely. That's also why I put together the trials curriculum. If you haven't heard about it, I've got a video that I'll show here in this card and you can learn more about learning trial skills in order. This video is actually going to be one that's posted in the membership, but I thought I'd also post it for the regular viewing audience as well. So when it comes to this risk dial, I definitely wanna talk about the risks to your body as well as also to your bike. So when it comes to your body, things like safety play a huge factor in your ability to continue riding. If you get hurt, you're not going to be able to progress. And someone's potential to get injured is dependent upon a lot of different variables. So your age, your mobility, your strength, how physically fit you are, how strong your core is, all of those things are going to play a factor. I think definitely something like your insurance. You know, if you're the only breadwinner in your family and you know that you can't get hurt because you're a construction worker and you got to go to work on Monday, you're going to ride in a much more timid fashion than, let's say, a 15-year-old who's just out there trying to get better and doesn't really care about those type of things. Sure, they don't want to get hurt, but I think there's a difference in your age, your stage in life, as it relates to how much risk you're willing to take with your own body. Things like your overall athleticism, as well as your ability to crash safely and learn how to bail and get off the bike in a safe manner are also going to determine how quickly you can progress. When it comes to risks as it relates to considerations with the bike, undoubtedly if you've got a newer bike, you're going to ride it a little differently than if you've got a used bike. If you're more familiar with how to fix things and where to get parts and you're a little more mechanically inclined, you're probably going to take different risks than someone who's a little bit more sensitive and concerned that they don't want to mess up their new bike. If you've got good protection parts in place, that's going to also play a factor. If you've got friends who can help you fix things, and if you know exactly who you can turn to to get different parts and ask questions, it's going to change the way that you look at fixing your bike. When I was talking to a younger rider, Ryan Land, who is actually going to be on the show in a future interview, I learned that he had a parts allowance. And I really asked him a lot of questions about this because as someone who's sponsored by a factory, Vertigo, he gets a certain allotment of money. I think he said like $100 a month to spend on parts, things that might need an upgrade or things that get damaged in the training. And just that thought of having money set aside that he knew he could spend to fix up the bike, it shifted something in me. And I realized that I wanted a parts allowance too. So as I looked at my own budget, I thought this makes a lot of sense. If I've got some money that I can put towards maintaining the bike, I'm probably gonna be going after steps and different challenges with a little bit more enthusiasm because I know, hey, if it gets broken, I can always fix it. 
Now, when it comes to learning a skill, I'm sure you guys can YouTube how to learn things and there's gonna be a ton of different information. I intentionally didn't do a whole bunch of research on this. I just came up with what does Tom do in order to learn something, especially as it relates to riding a motorcycle. So the first thing I wanna do is learn as much as I can about that particular skill. So let's say it's doing a jab zap. I'm gonna watch every YouTube video I can find on it. I'm gonna watch pro riders doing it. I'm gonna watch it in slow motion. I'm gonna try and study it and learn it and see exactly what it is that people are doing. What I'm doing is I'm trying to internalize and get a vision of what good looks like because if I can visualize it in my head, then I'm gonna be much more apt to understand how to do it in my own body. Next, I'm gonna be looking at what aspects are involved in doing that particular skill. So with a jap sap, you kinda of got a first wheelie, then you've also got revving up the engine with the clutch in, then you got the timing, the suspension coming down, and then popping that clutch and jumping. There's, there's all these different parts to it. And so I'm, I'm trying to look for different drills that I can do to isolate those different body movements. If I can break down just what I need to do on the throttle, I can practice that. If I can break down just what I need to do on the clutch, I can practice that. And so breaking that skill down into smaller segments allows me to kind of perfect those in a safe environment before trying to put them all back together. So for me, when it comes to practicing, I like to try and put a time limit or a number of reps that I'm going to do before just going out. I'm sure you guys have all fallen victim to that. Just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. And we get into this mentality of thinking that we're going to perfect it and we keep on doing it again and again. So for me, I set the timer on my bike for about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, or maybe I say I'm going to give myself 10 quality reps. And then I'm intentional just to focus during that amount of time. And then I take a break. I pull back. And I'm going to think, okay, what didn't work and why didn't it work? Because every time that you fail or you don't succeed, you're learning. Okay, what was it that I did or didn't do that didn't lead to success? And then I'm going to go back to that internal visualization of what good looks like. And I'm going to try and compare, okay, I didn't give it enough RPM. And so as I approach the next time, I'm going to be using a keyword, more RPM, more RPM. So as I'm going into that obstacle, I've got that drilled into my head and I'm really just coaching myself because if you're with other riders, excellent. But if you guys are like me, I learned in my backyard without anyone else telling me what to do. And as a result, I had to coach myself. I had to say these different type of keywords again and again. I had to hit lower on the obstacle. So as I'm thinking back to jabs apps, it was hit lower, more RPM, and then push that bike out in front. Those were the things that I was repeating again and again as I went in trying to master that skill. The next thing that can be really helpful is videoing yourself. Almost all of you guys, I'm sure, have a cell phone and that's how you're watching, and cell phones take great video these days. I would encourage you to film yourself. When you do that and you stop after a five or 10 minute session and watch what it is that you're doing, you're gonna be able to compare what you saw versus what a pro rider was doing or someone else in a video, a YouTube video. When you can compare those two, it becomes very obvious the different things that you have to work on. So for me, I like to film a lot of my riding as you guys can see. And as I'm filming that riding, I'm trying to look for when it wasn't successful or when it was, the different body mechanics or what it was that was different about that session. Now, filming can be a whole different story that I'll get into in another member video, but I think it's important if you can put up a camera or a cell phone or even have somebody else watch you to gain insight from that feedback as you see that attempt. And lastly, when it comes to practice sessions, I would say trying to keep your session shorter and work it into your long-term memory. Now, what I mean by that is if you're going out and practicing jab zats for let's say like 30 minutes straight, you're just working on that one skill over and over and over, it's kind of like teaching it to go into your phonological loop, that short-term memory that we have where you're like memorizing a phone number and you do it again and again and again, the same thing. But ideally what you wanna do is move into more of a circuit type training. And I got this from Neil Price, it's great advice. So if you can put together, let's say you're working on jab zaps and then you come over here and do some figure eights and then you come over here and do some static balance. Jab zap, figure eight, static balance. And you bounce between those three, you're creating a circuit. And what that's doing is it's putting it into your long-term memory. So that way as you move on to try and do a jab zap in an event where you haven't just practiced it for the last 15 minutes, you'll hopefully be successful. Moving things into your long-term memory is where you want them to reside so you can recall it whenever it is that you need it as you're riding. Now, as you're learning a new skill, undoubtedly, sometimes it really just helps to step away. I know there's been lots of times that I'm frustrated and I'm wanting to get something so bad. I'm so type A, wanting to accomplish it, 
But if I just step away, maybe it's my suspension that needs adjusted, or maybe I just need some time for my muscles to recover because I keep doing the same thing. When you step away, when you get some insight, some more feedback, or just a fresh set of eyes, it can really make a difference. Now, when it comes to your practice sessions, if you're not just trying to learn a particular skill or a technique, and you're wanting to get better at section riding, I'm sure a lot of you guys are already riding sections that are very difficult and then trying to get better and better at them. So the first time through, you might be getting a five, putting a foot down, then you're getting a three, a two, eventually, hopefully you can clean that section. But here's the key. After you've cleaned the section, ideally three times in a row, think about what it was that you did differently that allowed you to be successful in that section. Was your weight a little bit further to the outside? Were you a little more patient? Were you giving it more RPM going into that obstacle? Those little nuances are what you want to hang on to and then carry with you into the next session or into the next section. Those are the differences. And a lot of times we don't evaluate our riding. We don't kind of put all those pieces together. We just say, hey, I finally cleaned it. Well, think through what it was that you did differently and carry that with you. Now, some of you guys might say, Tom, I'm not that organized. I literally just watch a YouTube video and then go out and try it. And that's fine. Everyone's got a different approach as it relates to learning. Some of you might say, well, I sometimes ask a friend what I should do differently. But I would say if you're more intentional, you're going to see faster progress. One of the things I'm trying to do is in any of the how I learned how to do this type of video, I'm putting some notes in the description. The idea is that they're my rough filming notes that I'm putting in there. And then you can take a screenshot. That way, if you're out there and you're trying to work on something, if you can just reference that screenshot or a few different drills, hopefully you'll be able to incorporate that into your training as opposed to trying to rewatch a five minute video or something like that. So what's the point? Here's my call to action. I think you need to crank up the dial on two of these specifically. Your commitment and the way you practice, as well as the direction that you get. When it comes to the practice time, I really think you need to be intentional, focused on first things first, learning the skills in order so that you can build layer upon layer. And as you do that, you're going to be less likely to get hurt, which is going to lower your risk profile so you can continue to progress and have confidence as you go forward. The second is to get good direction. Ask somebody to help you get better at riding. Honestly, ask for a mentor, talk to people, take a class, get a coach, find ways that you can get better, whether it's following this channel or looking at other YouTubers. I really think that that's going to make a huge impact is when you can get good direction. I've got a membership that's all designed to learn trial skills in order. If you guys don't have somebody in your community that you can latch on to, consider joining that as well.